Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Dane cast. This time we have another pretty low level game here between a friend of our channel, Oramaru. He's a brand new StarCraft player, only been playing for a week or two, and he's playing the Protoss pieces in red in the bottom left hand corner of Everdream LE. And his opponent, the kid that everyone dislikes in class, well, maybe everyone likes, but the teachers always dislike. He's always getting himself in trouble. He's playing the blue Terran in the top right of Everdream. He is Cody. Cody, very early on, this is exactly why the teachers don't like him. He's always causing trouble. He's sending his SCV to the bottom left-hand corner of the map. Looks like he might be doing some kind of proxy shenanigans, or he is woefully misinformed as to where his opponent's base is going to be. He's actually saying GG. I think he's responding. I think he's already played Aura before, and so he's giving him a GG again because he's uh, responding to him playing him last time. And he's going to flop down his barracks in the bottom left-hand corner of this map. A little bit of a cheeky surprise here. And Aura is uh, as a very new player. I, I admire him. He's, he's learning from his mistakes. He's improved quite a lot within a very short amount of time. But you have to put yourself back into what it was like when you first started laddering. Right? If you've played a million games of StarCraft like I have, it's hard to remember what it's like to be brand new to the game. He's watched a lot of StarCraft, so he's he's ready to emulate the things he's seen other people do. But being in this kind of situation for the first time is going to give you a little bit of a pause for thought because you have to work out what you need to do given your build, given your mechanics, and given what your opponent is doing as well. So there is a barracks going down and it looks like he's gonna queue up a second barracks rather than sending two SCVs to build two barracks. Concurrently, he's gonna build one barracks at a time and actually float them into his opponent's base. Um, so obviously just hoping that his opponent isn't gonna scout this and obviously this is not the most obvious rush in the world. It's definitely a sort of a random thing to do. So it looks like Aura's not actually gonna be prepared for this. He's not gonna scout this. And Cody is queuing up five Marines here from this barracks. It looks like he's gonna to wanna to go for some Marines and go right into the mineral line. And will Aura be ready for this? It looks like he's got a, a Zealot of his own and he's gone for a double gas one base play. So he is going to be sticking to his one base, which should keep him pretty safe against this. It's not like he's got an early expand to defend or anything like that. And uh, Marines aren't particularly good against Zealots early on when they're both unupgraded. There's no concussive shells, there's no Marauders, anything like that to slow them. So if it's just naked Zealots with naked Marines, it's probably gonna go in the Zealots' favor if I had to guess, especially because this is a low level game and their, their micro isn't gonna be the craziest in the world. Uh, but you never know, it might just come down to who is able to make more units out of their buildings for the most part. And it looks like there's actually going to be a bunker rush from Cody. He's going to put a bunker on the bottom. Not really sure why he'd be putting it down on the low ground here, considering the Marines are going to be building inside the base. But I guess he's going to be using uh, reactored Marines uh, in the front as well. But Oromaru, very aware of this, stops this without it getting down at whatsoever. And uh, Oromaru himself is going to drop his Nexus and take his gases. Probably doesn't need these gases this early, but Aura really, really wants to make sure he has the, that tech advantage over his opponent. He's going to take his gases very early, but he doesn't know about these Marines building in this base. Now there's already four, all the Marines that were queued, and he's even queued up four more. So Cody, not worried at all about the efficiency of where his minerals are. He's just going to queue them all up to make sure that he doesn't miss any macro cycles off this. And he's queued up 10 Marines at the barracks. Uh, at the secondary barracks. So he's got quite a few Marines at this stage. He's even actually overall has more units than Oromaru does, but Oromaru's warp gate is just finishing. He doesn't have any more warp gates, but he does have a fleet beacon and a stargate. So he's going straight up to the fleet beacon stargate off of one gateway and an expansion. So actually this could be a little bit vulnerable of a vulnerability for him because he's just getting hit with Marines straight up fairly early on and he doesn't have a whole lot of units to defend it just a couple of zealots and a stalker meanwhile cody is taking his expansion at his base as well and he's gone for his third barracks and his factory not really sure what he's going to be using these for but he is getting an engineering bay with a plus one upgrade for the marines so that will give them some staying power against those air units if they do come out looks like oramaru is going straight for a carrier so by the time this rush is hitting He's already got a carrier coming out. So you can tell that this is rush is not the best timed rush in the world because if your Marines are hitting at the same time your opponent is getting a carrier, can you still call it a rush? 
Um, I don't know. May, that these are answer. These are questions for philosophers to answer in the far future. Maybe not for me to answer in the middle of this castle. These marines still just queuing up, still just building more. Not going to move out with them. Going to poke with these at the front. Maybe we'll be able to go for some probe damage here. And actually gets two probes for his troubles and fighting a single zealot. Or Mario realizes that he needs to engage here with all of his units. But does he realize what's going into the main base? I don't think he does. This is great a little multi prong attack from Cody. But the carrier does engage and there are a few interceptors out but and the marines are focus firing the carrier so it is able to whittle down quite a few of these marines looks like the attack got cleaned up at the natural and now just the carrier is fighting the naked marines but since they don't have any stim packs and they are now deciding to split their dps between the carrier and the interceptors this carrier does clean everything up so seven kill carrier here and uh, looks like Aura is going to hold this without too much trouble whatsoever here. So really looking like the carrier is doing some work for him there, especially with that little bit of pullback micro. Manages to trade really well against those Marines. Uh, there is a second wave of Marines coming in here though, but Aura still got his two Zealots and he's still got his carrier. And there's only four Marines this time. So one of these Zealots is going to go down without much of a say whatsoever. But as soon as the carrier comes in, Aura warps in a Stalker as well. So the Stalker is going to engage with this to soak up a little bit of damage for this carrier. The Marines frantically trying to shoot the Interceptors, but they are going to go down. So not too great of a situation for our friend Cody. He's invested a lot into this rush and he's still not mining off of his natural expansion. While Aura has been mining for a while now, he's even got his gases going. So Aura is in a great financial position here. He's even feeling a little bit saucy, dropping a second Stargate. So he's going to be able to pump out two carriers at a time. He might be wanting to go for plus one air weapons upgrades uh, if he's going to be going for this carrier build. But it looks like he's not too fussed about that just yet. He's just focusing on getting as many carriers out as he possibly can. I like his saturation on his minerals in his main base. He's even mining eight minerals. Uh, eight patches from his natural so some nice distribution there from Oromaru could use quite a few more probes at this stage but considering these guys are in bronze league I think he's doing just fine and uh, it doesn't really matter because the marines are going to come in and kill even more of his economy so he needs to focus on keeping his army in position in the front of his base and by his army I mean his carrier but there he's actually split his army up pretty well here to clean up this barracks in his main he's realized that there's something fishy going on here and uh, so he does clean that up. But now all the interceptors have gone down. There's too much DPS from these Marines. So he's going to need to warp in a Stalker to help fight against these Marines. And since these Marines have right-clicked on this carrier, they're just going to chase it down to their death while this Stalker picks away at them. So some nice micro there from Aura. Definitely getting the better of those trades. But now Cody is mining of his, on a second base of his own. And he's transitioning into some higher tech units. He's making two Vikings at a time here. He's getting his plus one armor. And he might even be able to transition into his plus two attack if he's feeling really lucky. With lots and lots of Marines comes lots and lots of responsibility. And we'll have to see if Cody is able to hit that critical mass of units early enough to attack into Oromara before he gets that critical mass of carriers. Uh, it looks like Cody, instead of amassing Marines with tech units, though, he's going to just keep sending them in waves straight into Aramaru's base to their death, and they're going to die before they even get a chance to get a single kill on anything. So Aura's small little group of units here is very, very cost-effective against these small little groups of non-stimmed Marines, especially as they don't have any medevac support. They don't have any Viking support. So he's just going to build a second starboard here and try to overwhelm them with Vikings, but that doesn't really help him deal with the problem of the stalkers on the ground. He still needs to have some kind of a base force. He can't just kill the carriers because Aura has a mixture. He has air units and he has ground units. And what Cody wants in this case is a Marine Marauder ball with upgrades with Vikings to support them rather than just pure Vikings. Because as we all know, Vikings are just not that great on their own. They're a great counter unit to tech units from Protoss. They're great against Colossi. They're great against carriers. But once you're left with just Vikings, the Vikings have a hard time with just cleaning up the rest of the enemy forces for most of the time. So you need to have some kind of meat to your army besides that. So we'll see if Cody does go for that. He still has three barracks building units, so he still should have some kind of meat, but I'd like to see him get that stim upgrade. And I'd like to see him get a few medevacs to top up the Marines as well to give them a little bit more staying power against Aura's units. So Aura himself is now nearly fully saturated as natural. Might be looking to take a third pretty soon. He's built a second cybernetics core, so he's gonna be getting double upgrades here He's uh, started his, he's queued his armor here. I'm not going to fault him too much for that. He's His heart's in the right place. He's getting both of his upgrades started. And he's on two Stargate carrier production. Definitely could be adding a third at this point. And uh, I would like to see him probably add a few gateways as well, seeing as he's floating 1,200 minerals. 
he definitely could afford making some gateway units. You don't have to go absolutely pure carrier. If you've got extra minerals, you can build it in things like cannons, in terms of things like gateways, things like pylons. Um, anything you can spend your minerals on um, apart from the carriers, because the carriers obviously are limited by the gas count, is going to be helpful just to bulk out your army a little bit, make it a little bit more difficult for your opponent. Looks like Cody's going to be a bit cheeky here and go for a proxy expansion near his double raxes here. He thinks, well, since these barracks have been here the whole game pumping out marines, he's obviously not coming to attack it. Since my army's here, I might as well build a base here because it's being defended anyway. But I don't know if this is going to stretch Cody too thin. Looks like he's going to queue up a couple of barracks with a single SCV here. A little bit of a mechanical issue there for Cody, but he's not worried about that. He's got so many barracks. He's got so many Vikings. He knows that he can take down this filthy Protoss if only he gets the right engagement. But he doesn't have upgrades for his Vikings, so if they do actually engage improperly, they might have a little bit of an issue. He's getting the ship weapon upgrades. Uh, sorry, the ship armor upgrade, so he shouldn't be in too bad of a situation, but again, he doesn't have the stim or the combat shields for the marines, so the marines are going to get absolutely melted here, um, and I'm, I worry for this proxy base, because if Aura becomes aware of it, he could just wipe it out, and that's his third base, not really a compelling reason to build it on this side of the map, to be honest, especially as Aura is able to defend all of his three bases without too much of an issue. Looks like Cody's going to aim move into the Protoss army, but the... Vikings are fighting the Interceptors and then fighting, so they're being sort of mis-split between the two, and so many Vikings are going down here, there's so many Interceptors, that critical mass of carriers is able to completely wipe out this uh, Terran force without too much of a hassle whatsoever. Nice little cleanup from Oromaru. And will he become aware of this base? He has no idea that there's a base down here, but it looks like he doesn't even care. He's going to smell blood in the water and he's going to go for the frontal assault up in Cody's grill. Cody himself is still still picking away building these barracks with this single SCV, this poor SCV. He's been given so much work. He needs to join a union so that you can split the labor up between these workers because these workers have the easy street life of just mining minerals and this one SCV is just inefficiently being queued up to kill all to build all of these barracks. Looks like there is a medevac here and these stalkers get a little bit overzealous without the carrier support and do go to their death but the carriers are going to come in. Here comes the cavalry. They're going to clear up absolutely all of the marines and now Oromaru is on top of Cody's production. He's completely wiping out these pathetic little barracks there. I haven't even been able to build a single unit and these bar these barracks are completely idle in this side of the map there's nothing cody can do here he needs to create lots he needs to have a, a magically an army here which he doesn't have he's completely traded everything away and since he wasn't macroing back home he doesn't have anything to back it up with and now aura is going to even go for the starports if he gets these starports down i think all of cody's hopes are going to be completely wiped out here especially as aura's got his upgrades and he's on top of the Terran's production, and these Vikings are not being micro to attack the carriers. He could just barely get this one down, but there's still four carriers left, and now the CC is going down. Aura's just right-clicking on buildings and units. Anything he clicks on is going to die, and if the starport goes down, Cody's ability to defend these carriers is going to be greatly diminished. I don't know, really understand why he's making Liberators at this stage, but ever, as soon as they spawn, they're going to go down, and there's even more carriers joining for Oromaru. And looks like he's going to be able to just A move through this base, click on the buildings one at a time. Cody's deciding that he's never going to say die. He's going to try and escape with his starport. He does have a handful of SCVs transferring down to his proxy base here. But how is he ever going to transition into killing this? He, even his starport was killed before it flew away. He can't even save his tech structures. Now he's set back to ba barracks tech. He's lost his factory and his starport. Does have his upgrade still going, but as soon as the carriers get there, it's going to drop as well. And now all of his supply depots dying. Everything is just going down for Cody. He's going to have to rebuild all of this infrastructure if he wants to survive. He's down to 28, now 31 army supply, nearly half the army supply of our Protoss Overlord here. And now his second base is going to go down as well. I'm not really sure what Cody's plan is to get through the rest of this game. He's got a handful of Marines here, but as soon as these interceptors get a piece of them, they're going to get wiped out without too much hassle whatsoever. Will a single carrier even go down here? Looks like it won't. And Aura is going to clean up everything at the natural expansion here of Cody. Now Cody's retreating the rest of his marines. He wants to defend this base. Aura still does not know about it, so he has a chance to rebuild here, but he's a one base Terran now with no infrastructure other than two barracks against a three base Protoss with two two carriers and three Stargate carrier production. So Cody's chances here are pretty much zero, uh, but again, all the way down in the leagues here, you, know, you don't really have the skill of knowing when you're out of the game. I guess there's still that that small hope in your mind that maybe you can come back. 
but unfortunately for Cody, he's not playing Protoss, so he's not going to have a Dark Shrine somewhere. He's not going to have that comeback potential. Maybe if he had a fleet of Banshees that with Cloak and he spread them out across all of Oromaru's bases, he might have a chance of coming back with the power of Cloak, but he doesn't. All he's got is Marines on two Reactor Barracks. He doesn't even have Stim or Combat Shields. He's going to walk in the rest of his Marines right into the natural expansion of Aura and right-click it down. But now the carriers are moving to intercept, and Aura realizes that he's got to be out somewhere on the map. So he splits his forces up. He goes with the hunting party to look for the Terran base. Meanwhile, he's bringing back half of his carriers home to deal with this Marine force. If he can clean this Marine force up, I think he'll be perfectly fine. I mean, to be honest, I think he'll be fine anyway. But it looks like one carrier does go down, but there are seven more where that came from. And as soon as the reinforcements come back, nice micro from Aura pulling back the injured carriers so he doesn't even take much hull damage there. But Aura is slowly but surely moving his fleet in the direction of where this Terran army seems to be coming from. He's noticed a suspicious pattern of the Terran always moving from the bottom right-hand side of the map. So he knows that the rebel base has to be somewhere around here, but he's not really sure exactly where it is. So slowly but methodically, he's going to gradually move his carriers around and engage this base. And now, as soon as he gets past these bushes, he is going to spot finally the rebel base is here and he's going to wipe it out with a complete prejudice. He's not even going to give them an offer for mercy. No GG from Cody. He just leaves the game and it's a victory for our friend Oromaru.